Yesterday, I did a video where I talked about the fact that this Saturday on uh, Discovery Family, My Little Pony Friendship is Magic will debut the episode The Last Crusade. Now, this episode has already been seen early in other countries like Italy, thanks to some kind of agreement that Hasbro has with these countries to release the episodes weeks, maybe months earlier than, than the U.S. But anyway, the reason I bring that up is because, like I said in yesterday's video, the episode will feature the debut, the official visual animated debut of the first official LGBTQ couple in Scootaloo's Ants, Ant Holiday, and Ant Lofty. These two characters got introduced in Volume 3 of the Ponyville Mysteries, which is an ongoing, I think it's still ongoing, book series that you can find on Amazon. Now, the reason I brought this up is due to the fact that, um, as noted by a lot of people, this is sort of a big deal. And already, a lot of media outlets, like I mentioned yesterday in the video, major, not so major, are talking about this happening. Um, and it's ironic that it's happening during Pride Month. Now, here's the thing, here's the question though that a lot of people seem to seem to ask when it comes to this kind of um, situation, this kind of a topic. Should LGBTQ slash same-sex couples be depicted in animated programming, mostly animated family-friendly programming? And that is kind of, and honestly, that answers up for debate. I mean, as you could tell, I'm doing this on the fly, unscripted, just saying what I can, or what comes to mind. But anyway, that's kind of up for debate, because depending on who you are, where you live, and all that, it's, you know, it's a, it's a matter of choice. Now, like I said yesterday, I'm a born-again Christian, and I was raised on the fact that with all due respect, that I should not re support or I should not support the LGBTQ uh, slash pride community. That being a born again Christian, we look at that as not being what God intended. And that's how I was raised, and out of respect for what I, how I was raised and for what I was born to believe, Eve, I do stick by that. But, I am a believer that if you want to go a certain route, if you want to support something, that's your choice. You have the right to do that. Um, and when it comes to LGBTQ being represented in family-friendly programming, especially animated family-friendly programming, is, again, up for debate. You know, you can, you know, here's the thing. This this is really nothing new in the past, what is it, decade? It's really nothing new. I mean, ironically, we have the sequel of Frozen uh, coming out in November. Now, the reason I bring that up is because when Frozen first debuted, the way they positioned Elsa at, was Elsa could end up being an LGBTQ character. In fact, a lot of people have petitioned that Elsa become Disney's first LGBTQ princess, or slash queen, if you catch my drift. They've been petitioning that. Heck, a lot of people are hoping that this new movie, the sequel, Frozen 2, will introduce maybe an LGBTQ uh, love interest for Elsa. But... But again, like I said, this goes a lot... But this has been going on for quite some time. I mean... My Little Pony Friendship is Magic has been going on a lot longer than, let's say, Steven Universe and Adventure Time. It has not, I will say this, it has not gone as long as uh, Author, the PBS animated se series. It has not gone on as long as Author has. Author has been going on for about 20 plus years now, since I think 1997. And it has tackled a lot of subjects itself. Author is actually a PBS animated series targeted towards a more older, semi-older demographic of children. And like I said, it's basically addressed a lot of controversial um, situations. It has discussed a lot of different 
uh, topics. In fact, Arthur has come under fire for what it just did. Now, in case you guys don't know, the series premiere, the 22nd series, uh, the, the season 22, the 22nd season premiere, I should say, had an episode or an animated short where Arthur's teacher uh, gets married and he gets married to his significant other. Now, his significant other is not a female, it's a male. And his teacher's significant other is named Patrick. And Arthur's teacher, of course, is known as Mr. Ratburn. Now, this has come under fire due to the fact that this is a PBS series, a PBS exclusive series, that for some odd reason decided now was the best time to go this route. But it's not the first time. Fourteen years ago, they tried the same thing by introducing a character that had two moms. And what happened? Well, apparently, several states, well, one state in particular, Alabama, decided to ban not just that episode from 2005, but also banned this episode that was the season two, the 22nd season premiere. The reason being is they didn't want to break the trust they have with parents. Basically, parents trusting, trusting them to allow their kids to sit in front of the television and watch the programming without supervision. Now, again, whether you agree with Alabama's and the PBS station's uh, decision to pull the episode and basically show a rerun of an older episode in its place, that's up for debate. That's up to you. The thing is, nowadays, whether we want to admit it or not, we are in a time, whether we want to acknowledge it or we don't, like I said, we are in a time to where this is prominent. This kind of stuff is prominent. I mean, there's even reports going out that, born, that Christians themselves, Christians and other religious people, uh, people out there, Baptists, Catholics, Methodists, you name it, there are religious people out there, prayer warriors as they would call themselves at times, that do support LGBTQ. They support it. They support the Pride right, uh, Month and Pride people and all that. Because they go off the acknowledgement that basically Jesus told, told us to love one another no matter what. And they look at it, and they take that, and they say, well, even though these people are LGBTQ, we need to love on them. We don't need to discard them. We don't need to disrespect them. we got to love on them. We may not agree with their choice, but so be it. I mean, you know, there's not really much you can do. If they want to go that route. They gotta, they're going to go that route. You know, whether you agree with it or you don't. We're in that time right now to where, unless the next president of the United States comes out and declares, along with Congress and all that, that LGBTQ is banned, and that all the marriages that took place across the decades are null and void, and now these people have to find true significant others uh, to be with, unless that happens, this stuff's still going to be around no matter, let's say, who's running the country. But getting back on point, should it be represented in children's cartoons, or mostly family-friendly family -friendly animated cartoons, like My Little Pony, Arthur, Steven Universe, Adventure Time, Clarence, and, and all those. Even some Disney shows are doing it. You know, should it be represented? And again, that's up for debate. You know, we're not in charge of, we're not in charge of, the, of these companies. You know, one thing a lot of people, you know, when it comes to the, what I'm trying to say is when it comes to the author situation, a lot of people don't, a majority of people, whether they support LGBTQ or they don't, do not agree with Alabama's decision to pull the episode. Because even if they don't support LGBTQ slash pride, they do acknowledge that we are in a world where eventually kids are going to notice this. Kids are going to see this no matter what. So trying to hide it and act like it doesn't exist is not going to help. 
I mean, I'll give you an example. Star, one of the interpretations of Star Trek, I think it was, I think it was Voyager, I believe. They did an episode called Threshold. And in this episode, one of the main characters got turned in, got mutated and was slowly turning into a lizard person. Because they went at a speed that caused this mutation to happen. And I guess it had some kind of side effect. I don't know. And in the end, they ended up, after furthering, furthering mutating and all that, they ended up going again at warp 10 or whatever it was to a swamp-like planet, and they took the captain of the Voyager, I think, I think that's what the name, Captain Jane, Jan, uh, Jane, I think that's what her name was, and by doing so, she too got mutated into basically a lizard-like mutant, or reptile. And they ended up having babies that they left behind on the swamp planet after they were neutralized, brought back to the ship and restored. And because of that, a lot of people, fans, and even the crew itself, cast cast members, behind the scenes members, have all disacknowledged, disavowed this episode. Even though they keep the episode in rotation, they pretty much feel that the, they pretty much look at the episode as non-canon. Like it's just something that maybe happened in an alternate universe, has nothing to do with the prime storyline. And the reason I bring that up is because that's how Alabama, how people view Alabama banning the episode, the 22nd episode of Arthur, um, for, it, for its portrayal of a LGBTQ wedding. You know, it's like, nope, we're not going to show it. We're going to act like it doesn't exist. We'll show all the other new episodes for season 22, but we won't show that because it doesn't exist. Here's the thing, though. Whoever's making that call doesn't realize people could watch it, kids could watch it on the PBS website, as well as watch it on YouTube and Daily Motion, Amazon, Netflix, you name it. They could still get a view. They could still watch it. They could still see it. So they look at it like, why are you hiding it? Why are you hiding this? It doesn't make sense. Now, some people have come out and defended the fact that you know, this episode is about learning and that eventually this is a learning experience that Alabama is denying kids of, you know, watching and learning from. But again, it's, it's basically, basically, what's, what's the term? Valor is basically, it's, it's basically, it's some kind of, Basically, their decision, I guess, in their minds, is the better value of discretion or something like that. But point is, but the point is, getting back on topic, is should it have been done? Should they have even come up with the episode? Should have, I think his name is Mark Brown or something, the, the show creator. Should he have even decided, hey, let's go that route? Should he have decided, you know what, that's a good idea, but let's not do that. We don't want to get anybody angry. We'll just do it. We'll just do this. You know, should it have been made? Should the decision been made? And that's a very valued question. Nobody can, that, honestly, I don't think anybody can really answer. Should it have been made in the first place to do an LGBTQ uh, episode, especially as part of the season 22 premiere? I mean, I even had somebody comment on the video I did yesterday about it. And they said that they don't want the little sister to have to watch something like this. Because something like this doesn't belong um, in, in kid, family, kid, kid slash family friendly programming. Like, let's say, My Little Pony Friendship is Magic. In other words, there are those that believe if you're going to do LGBTQ representation in programming, do it in prime time adult oriented programming that even if you have kids watching it with you who they could sit when watching it with you you'll be there to watch it with them and maybe explain to them why these two characters these man and these two men or these two women are together you know 
you know, that's how they look at it. Like, if you're going to do a representation of LGBTQ, do it in a more primetime, family, if not slash adult-oriented uh, viewership, a viewing block, and don't do it during the daytime when kids can see. Especially, you know, with animated programming that kids are known to watch. But, again, it's all up, in my opinion, it's not up to us. It's not up to us, the, the fan ends. It's not up to us, the people. It's up to the people running things. And if those, and if Mark Brown and those behind the author series felt, hey, let's do this, let's put some LGBTQ into the series, because it'll help educate the semi-older kids on what this is, then that's their decision. If they felt it was part of a learning experience that kids would benefit from, so be it. If the people at Discovery Family, Emily, but mostly All Spark Animation and Hasbro Studios, feels, hey, the, now is the proper time. Yes, it is Pride Month, but now is the proper time to introduce an official LGBTQ couple into the into the animated series. Yes, and that's their decision. So be it. I mean. They pretty much already did so with these two same characters in the Ponyville Mysteries uh, book series. So they're just saying, you know what, we did it there, we're going to do it here. And like I said, and like I said in that video I did yesterday and like I said earlier, a lot of fans look at My Little Pony Friendship is Magic and they basically look at the two characters of Lyra and Bon Bon on both the Friendship is Magic and Equestria Girl side of things and they say, yeah, you can... S and basically they can interpret the fact and see visually for themselves that... Yeah, these two are not just best friends. They're not BFFs, you know, best friends forever. No, these two are more than that. You could tell by their interactions and everything. And the same could be said, you know, for the Equestria Girls roller coaster of friendship, like I mentioned earlier. I mean, the per one of the people behind this, behind that special, basically said that intentionally and somewhat unintentionally, they made the scenario between Rarity and Applejack seem more like a lovers' quarrel instead of an argument between two best friends. And just the way that visually they made up and everything, it's like, you're not fooling anybody. You're basically saying, yeah, these two are basically LGBTQ. You know, so again, is LG should LGBTQ be allowed in animated family-friendly programming? Again, to me, it's a matter of choice. I mean, I may not support LGBTQ, honestly, but I look at the fact that even though I was born and raised not to support it because I'm a born-again Christian, I do respect that if you're going, that if you want to go that route, if you want to support it, that's your choice. It doesn't bother me. I respect your choice. I respect your decision. And that's all I can say. Do I... Would I support it? No. But the thing is, if you want to go that route, fine. That's up to you. And if you want that, and if that's your choice, I respect it. The point is, there's just a lot of people out there that believe that LGBTQ should not be associated with animated ch children slash family-friendly programming, especially during the day. That it should be left for something like prime time late at night and that's it. But here's the thing. Try telling that to the people at Cartoon Network that worked on Steven Universe, that worked on Adventure Time, that worked on Clarence. Try telling that to some of the people at Disney that worked on Gravity Falls. I'm just saying. Point is, no matter how you look at it, it's not our choice. It's not up to us whether or not LGBTQ gets represented in animated, in, uh, animated family-friendly slash children's programming, all-ages programming. It's not up to us. It's up to the people behind the scenes that, are create, that work on that series. And if Discovery Family didn't want this episode to happen, Last Crusade, didn't want, to include, didn't want this to happen because it includes... It has, the, it has the inclusion of LGBTQ characters, then they could have easily pulled the plug a long time ago on that episode and said, nope, rewrite the episode or come up with something different. But they didn't. 
The same with the majority of the PBS stations and networks out there. Could they have, could they have followed suit like Alabama and said, nope, we're not going to air this once they heard about what it was going to be? Yeah, they could have, but they didn't. A majority of them have kept it in rotation. So, again, it's just a matter of choice. And it's not up to us, like I said. It's up to the people that work on the series. But let me know what you guys think. Do you think LGBTQ... I want to hear from you guys. Do you think LGBTQ should be represented in animated, uh, family-friendly, slash children's, all, slash all-ages programming? Should it be represented in animated, family-friendly, slash children's, slash all-ages programming? Do you think it should be? Or do you think it should be left alone? Or just utilized in primetime late night programming. Let me know what you guys think down below. Comment if you like. Talk to y'all later.